So we're here? Yes. Again? Yes, we are. Have you recovered from Comic Palooza yet? You got everybody? No, that takes a while. Hey, you got everybody on the airplane? That's a lot of work, dude. I got one day that I'm going to be able to actually spend there. Saturday. And that's it. I'm at the airport the whole other time. There's this one celebrity. I'm not going to say their name because I don't want to get in trouble. But this bitch is being so needy. She arrives. Okay, now they booked her for the show. She's one of the guests. She arrives Sunday morning at 1030. Oh, wow. And I got to greet her at the gate to get her to a car to get her to the show. Where she's going to do a panel. And then she's leaving that same night where I got to go meet her at the airport and bring her back to the gate so she can leave. Oh, yeah. That's <laughs> bullshit. <laughs> so on a three-day show, she's only there for like a couple hours? Yeah. Wow. And they're making a huge deal out of it, too. And I don't know why. but I don't know why, but yeah. I'll leave that for another day. <laughs> I'll leave that for off mic. Oh, yeah. But I'm really looking forward. John Cusack, I seem to get to spend the most time with this That's weekend, cool. So that's going to be pretty cool. That is awesome. I get to hang out with him for a while. Ask him if he ever made anything out of that kickboxing career. <laughs> <laughs> Lloyd Dobler. I'm just going to talk about uh, One Crazy Summer the whole time mm. I'm with him. <laughs> what was it like working with Bobcat? <laughs> <laughs> you hang out with Booger anymore? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> well, welcome, welcome, everybody, to episode 86 of Scary Dad Podcast. we got a guest. Make sure you do an introduction. We, I'm going to. I'm still introducing the show, bro. Okay. It is June 4th, 2018, and the title of this one is Ripley's Believe It or Not, where we're going to talk about the famed Ripley's Believe It or Not. And believe it or not, we actually have a guest tonight. You kind of blew my wad there, bro. I'm sorry, bro. <laughs> The co-host is telling the host what to do? <laughs> oh, man. It happens. Uh, the know your place. <laughs> like, you know, in the middle of. Okay, nah, so I flubbed the line. This guy's the businessman. I'm getting, I'm getting the gist of this. The businessman. <laughs> Two shows ago, I flubbed the, I flubbed yeah, the, the line. Sorry. <laughs> he, he's looking at me like you're gonna say it, right? You're gonna say it. You're not gonna forget it this time. <laughs> Come on, man. All right. So is it, is it James or Jim? I uh, know. Uh, it's Jesse. But you just call me Mr. Deadman. That's okay. Fine. Did I read it wrong? Uh, oh, it's Jesse. Uh, J- Jesse. Okay, Jesse oh, Deadman. The real name's Jesse Deadman, but you know, from Mr. Deadman, Mr. Deadman, from yeah, Deadman's yeah. Tone, Deadman's Tone. He, yeah, he came over a couple weeks ago, and um, we did a quick little uh, meta episode. Just, but I will just, say, it's great that he got my name wrong because it seems like a running joke of my podcast. I always get everyone's name totally butchered, <laughs> and I, you know, what? I'm just gonna leave it like that. It's just, it's just so funny that way. It's just like, it, it's like, it's expected. Well. It's funny because actually I went to school with a guy in high school with a guy named Jim Deadman. And Hold on, where? In Houston? In Houston. No at, the fuck way. At, what? At Stratford. There's another dead man walking here. It's it is D E D M A N. And uh I didn't even really put two and two <laughs> together and then it occurred to me as I was pulling up and you were getting out, I was like He could be like my long lost brother or something. Could be. I don't know, I haven't <laughs> talked to him since I was in like tenth grade. But um but yeah, it was one of those things. Like, wouldn't it be weird if that's that guy? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's not a lot of walking Strang- Stranger Things dead happening around. But, but anyway, Mr. Deadman is here to talk about Ripley's Believe It or Not, or as my dad used to say, just to piss me off. But believe it or don't. <laughs> like, no, dad, it's not what it is. No, it's not right. <laughs> He's like, whatever. It's <laughs> so we're going to talk about Ripley's. Um, as with many things like the Barnum and Bailey Circus, you know, kind of the sideshow, so many, so many things that used to be pretty ubiquitous, they're everywhere. It's kind of gone by the way, kind of, kind of disp- you know. In the age of the internet, where you can see something and kind of just run to Google and be like, "Is this true?" You know, the the kind of uh-huh. oddities things kind of is not as as mysterious and interesting as it used to it's be. It's too easy to dis- disprove now. You don't have well, you don't have that, that period of time where you're not sure so you can believe it without mm-hmm. being sure. Yeah. Google sucks cuz like, you don't have any time not to know anything anymore. Well, so it, it's not as rewarding whenever you find out the information for one and you don't get that time where it's just kind of magical. You don't know if it's true or not so you can enjoy it. Well, also, you know, you think about when you're a kid, you go to the library and you pick out a book on like Loch Ness monster 
number one, there's not a counterpoint section of the library that's like anti Loch Ness. You know, so you just read your book about Loch Ness Monster and you're like, this is cool. There's also not a comment section at the bottom of your book being like, this is bullshit. <laughs> oh, that's be nice. That's be nice. So, <laughs> the internet would say all sorts of other things. So, a few other words in there. <laughs> so, so you could totally, you know, you could make it through your childhood believing in stuff or at least thinking it's plausible without a whole bunch of naysayers trying to screw up your day. <laughs> But yeah, so we're here to talk. The Ripley's okay. Museums, of course, I always grew up with enjoying. We used to have one in New Orleans I remember going to as a, as a very young middle schooler, just loving that kind of stuff, man. Because that was, you know, I grew up with Weekly World News, so the stuff that Ripley's gave us just kept that thing going from my childhood. It, absolutely. Yeah. And the, uh, the believability factor, because a lot of that stuff was kind of, they, 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 they played tennis with it. Yeah. It was like, Ripley's would have it, and then Weekly World would have it, and then it would end up on Unsolved Mysteries, and then back to Weekly World, and then sometimes the Inquirer would even get it. And we've did an entire show on uh, Weekly World News, <laughs> and <laughs> no. discussing how like both of us, our grand, our grandmothers used to love it. So we'd sit there, just going through all of the the, the history and the mystery <laughs> of the Weekly World News when we were kids, being like, I want to believe. <laughs> well, well, there's still hope for it yet because we're in the time. Of fake news, mm. and I'm not getting all political and stuff. I'm <laughs> saying that there's actual articles that are just manufactured as complete total bullshit, but they yeah. come off as if they are legit. It's been off from the Onion that actually try to be uh, like the Onion, but more believable. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And believer, uh, Ripley's believe it or not, you know, their website still has like yeah, articles. All the they still have the museums and stuff. Might so. seem legit. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, like I said, this is episode. 86. We are now deep in the heart of summer, so if uh, if you are like we are, where the, the air is basically made out of steam and mosquitoes, there's hope. September 29th, Scary Dad's Haunted Halloween Show. We are working behind the scenes to bring that to you. Uh, we just had our websites completely revamped, so all the links work. So go over there, push buttons, cross back and forth, learn about it, listen to a podcast while you're at it. We're we're trucking into into fall. We'll get there as soon as we can. Nobody wants it to come faster than me. <laughs> it sucks. <laughs> but before we get into Ripley's, we're going to get into old business. There's not a tremendous amount of old business today. Um, but in naming things properly, news on this date, 1783. The Montgolfier brothers demonstrate the Montgolfier, which is a hot air balloon. Okay. Uh, ask, what the fuck is a Montgolfier? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a golf course for a mountain. They're like, let's let's get stuff and let's put it together. And <laughs> okay. Let's, okay. Let's make a hot air balloon and make what are we going to call that? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure that. Everybody was astounded whenever the news came out that a Montgolfier was invented. They're like, what the, the hell that? is that? You got a picture? <laughs> All right. On this date in 1876, the Transcontinental Express goes from New York to San Francisco in 83 hours and 39 minutes. It's not bad for that time period. No. That's actually really damn good. It's pretty fast for, I guess, who's a coal driven local locomotive um, compared to the wagon trains of today I'm sure <laughs> it's very nice yeah I read a, a werewolf novel there's a there's a book uh, author is S.P. S. Somtow and it's called Moondance and it's absolutely the most depressing book you'll ever read it is absolutely just horrifying um, the, the, the gist of the story is that there's these European werewolves that have been living there forever um, but as Europe has industrialized, their hunting grounds are, have gone away, so they've decided to come to the New World and go off into the wilderness, and then that way they can just hunt Indians and pioneers and stuff, and the, they'll live for a lot longer. It's a cool concept. Um, however, it's thoroughly depressing. It's, it's, it's full of, like, horrible murders. It's like and, the Oregon Trail. Yeah. <laughs> and... Um, that actually but sounds good. It, 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 it's, it's a pretty it, cool. It was book. a well written book, but it was it was hard to read. I mean, it was sad. It was it was tough. Um, just all kinds of slaughter on on all on all sides. And the werewolves are really bad. 
but they encounter lots of equally bad people <laughs> along the way. But um, at some point, they're you know they're in their human forms and they board the train to go west, mm. and they are just they're just absolutely flabbergasted that they're roaring across the prairie at twenty miles an hour, and I'm sitting there just being like. <laughs> Roaring you, you could the almost jump off the train and run and then hop back <laughs> on. But they were just absolutely stunned by the speed at which... Because it used to be 20 miles, it would take you a day to move 20 miles on a wagon. Right. You know, mm. it's... <laughs> yeah. I somehow ended up watching Wagons East the other day. Do you remember that movie with John Candy? Is that his last one? Yeah, yeah. It's as bad as I remember it being. Yeah, it was, was not a good movie. movie. It was horrible. <laughs> I was like, let me give this a try. I might enjoy it now. They don't. No, no, it's, it was never good. <laughs> with uh, Rich, with uh, Richard Lewis, yes, and yes. John. Yeah, that was, that was sad because it was his last movie. I think he died while they were making it. Yeah, or shortly after. Shortly after, I think. And yeah, yeah. Uh, turds don't get better. No, age. <laughs> really not. No, that's not. That was not a good coda for him. No, no. You cut it open, it's still gonna stink. <laughs> Okay, now we've mentioned it before. Some, sometimes we sit down and do important things. Other times we sit down and you know record a podcast. On this date in 1896, Ford Henry Ford's quadricycle was tested. Quadricycle. Maybe a four wheeler. It's the first gas powered car. Okay. Oh, that's what they called that thing back then. Yeah, they didn't just call it a car. They had to call it a quadricycle. Yeah. Well, I'm sure there was bicycles. And it was probably a one seater. Yeah, it was probably a yeah. one seater. It was a quad. Yeah. It was a I, 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 I could basically. see a madman scene <laughs> tackling that issue. A quadricycle. No one's gonna buy that. What the fuck is a quadricycle? <laughs> exactly. It's, it's uh, two motorcycles bolted together. <laughs> I mean, just make it a three letter word. Call it a, I don't know, a car or something. Man, we got a rental car place around the corner from my house. That rents those backwards tricycle cars. Yeah. So it's like the two wheels in the front, spiders, the one yeah. wheel in back. And it is bizarre. It is weird how your mind works. Three wheels with one wheel in front and two in back, that looks cool. Like you put, you know, like those Harley tri you know, motorcycle tricycles. Those trikes, the, yeah. Um, the bicycle trikes, those look cool. You put the two wheels in front and the one in back, it just looks screams dork. It's just like oh, yeah. It's like you should be like you're just cruising up and down the Strand in Galveston or something. <laughs> like, it's like just a little rental vehicle. Yeah, <laughs> like, that, that's not a car. I thought that was something for people to laugh at. I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's like some something you do at the parade or something. They actually <laughs> rented that thing. Okay, and uh, the Segway music's probably going to be a little bit of Iron Maiden because on this date in 1940, the Dunkirk evacuation ends. And Churchill delivers the "We shall never surrender" speech. All right. So, crank it up. We're gonna, <laughs> gonna be listening to some metal, baby. <laughs> it's always a good time for metal. Run to the hills. That's it. My daughter's favorite song. Literally, in the backseat of the car every morning, she's like, "Daddy, will you put on that song that I like so much?" That's a good song. <laughs> so run to the hills. She's in the back in the back seat. You know what? My son's not much of a metal metalhead. He's only four. But my daughter, she's two, she loves Slayer. <laughs> and that's because when she was born, the first song that she heard was Slayer. I mean, I was pretty much doing the rift to uh, Skeletons of Society. Like, <laughs> oh, whatever, I can't remember what now, but you know what I'm saying. Uh, I did that riff, and then I played it on the cell phone, and then she's like, that was our lullaby. <laughs> uh, like Slayer and Slipknot and things like that. That would actually put her to sleep. <laughs> my daughter, my, my seven-year-old, likes, likes Dragon Force. Oh, like... It's pretty cool. It, it's cool. It's amazing music, man. And and um, she was like, Dad, what is this? So the next time she got in the car, I was, <laughs> I was listening to Maiden. She's like, what is this? And I was like, this is Maiden. I'm try Maiden with her. She goes... Can you put on the other band? <laughs> oh she's man! Like, this, she's like, this is too slow. Oh, <laughs> shit. I was like, I was like, Maiden's too slow, and she's like, yeah. I was like, okay, fair enough. It oh, did happen man. to be one of their slower tracks, so I, you know, kicked it over. But it was still like, it's impressive. My seven year old's like, hey, <laughs> I need to listen to that. I don't even know what kind of beats those would be in Dragon Force. They're not thirty seconds. They're like sixty four times. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Just. 
All right, this date in 1944, Rome falls to the Allies. It's the first Axis capital to fall. Italy was just an also ran. They 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 tried, but they they had a they had a German and a Japanese shield. <laughs> they, they weren't exactly uh, they were, they were in the boot. <laughs> yeah. And on this date in 1989, the Tiananmen Square protests ended in a massacre in which 241 or more people died. And if you're in China, you can't look that up. <laughs> no, they, they, yeah, they say it didn't happen. Yeah. <laughs> they, they disappeared. Look at that. Fake news. <laughs> <laughs> All right, notable deaths or notable births. This day in 1932, John Barrymore, father of Drew Barrymore, mm. famous actor. 1936, he's been in so many other things, but you only know him from the burbs. Mr. Bruce Dern. <laughs> <laughs> he's been in a lot. He's been in a lot. I was talking to a buddy of mine who worked today about just character actors. and you know, Like MC Ganey's coming uh, to Comic Palooza. Mm-hmm. People have no idea who the hell that is when I say MC Ganey, but he's been in so many damn movies. You have seen him at one time or another in something. Stephen Kowalowski, one of the most famous character actors, you know. All you got to do is mention Groundhog Day. Ned Flanders, the insurance agent. Everybody knows who that is, but yeah. nobody knows his name. Mm. <laughs> There's a lot of them. There's like so that. many awesome character actors like that, man. Well, that's what's weird is like sometimes these. Because these, for the business, especially, if I don't recognize a name, I skip by it. And then sometimes I'll have to run back because I'll see somebody post it on Twitter, like, happy birthday to, you know, so-and-so, and it's like, or like, and it won't be somebody like Wes Craven or John Carpenter, but it'll be, you know, it'll be like, like, um, who do we just meet? Like, C.J. Graham. Mm -hmm. Okay. Notable birth, C.J. Graham. I don't know who C.J. Graham is. Not in passing, not just scrolling right. a list of, like, 200 names. But if then I'll see like oh C J Graham who played Jason in Part Six like oh then I have to go throw him back on to like yeah. I have to go look him up real quick and make sure that it's correct. But um, but yeah man it's, it's hard with with names. Yes. Yeah. You know so many so many people on Twitter have the little check mark next to their name. I'm like I don't fucking know who you are. <laughs> I mean, why, yeah, why, why are you why, verified? Why did you verify? <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> I'll follow Sebastian Bach from Skid Row. He's not verified. He just like post pictures of his really? kids and shit. Yeah, it's weird. <laughs> On uh, Instagram, actually, mm. post pictures of his kids and you know, like vacation photos and stuff. And you're like, I was watching some old Trailer Park Boy episodes earlier where he was in it. It was funny as hell, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Sebastian boxing trip. And on this date in 1975, Angelina Jolie. Was she anything scary? Was she in anything scary? Uh, she's, she is kind of scary now, but she, yeah, a little bit. <laughs> There's a lot of action. I don't think she did anything actual horror related. Uh, her sex life is a horror. <laughs> I mean, there's that. Yeah, <laughs> if you, I mean, you're gonna fuck Billy Bob Thornton. I mean, come on. She was, she was, she was like weird goth chick though. Like whenever she got, yeah. You know, oh, I yeah. mean, she would be crazy. But she, she wasn't making daddy proud. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's why, that's why Brad Pitt went with her, right? Dude, she was yeah, like the fling and couldn't couldn't quit. And then, and then, well, at the at the time, she was the hottest thing in the world. And yeah, he just couldn't, yeah. He, she was he, she was Laura Croft, the yeah. Laura Croft, he, he not this new one. Yeah, he couldn't. Uh, <laughs> I'm not. You, you can't I'm, say no to that. I was like, dude, you're Brad Pitt. Like, you literally can have any girl in the world, and she's like, hey, and he, you're like. Mm hmm. And from what I've heard, and this is bad, and I'm not up on celebrity gossip, but apparently, like, Jennifer Aniston so high-strung. When she was on Friends for, like, ten years, she had the same salad every day for ten years for lunch. Yeah. The same one. The same salad every day. Because she's just that. And, like... Well, here's the thing, man. So then you look at Angelina, and she's got, like, she's wearing a vial of blood, and she's kind of, like, 
She's you a know? succubus, dude. She we did, is, we did is, a show about is. Hollywood like, succubus. She got, she got, like, like, she hypnotized Brad, bro. <laughs> she oh, got, she totally <laughs> did. Yeah, oh, he was, he, 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 he probably, around kids and everything. He had the United he, Nations of Children walking around adopting with Adopting kids. Yeah. <laughs> now, now, do you think that's his idea or her it's idea? her idea. That's yeah, her so idea. She, yeah, he was just going along with it. He was He's like, like okay. Jennifer Aniston would do this. Okay, I got another arm. I carry another one. Yeah, she she hypnotized him with that little vial of Billy Bob's blood. She's a succubus. He's like, this, is, tell you, this, is, this is. is weirdness, and you want it. <laughs> He's like, oh, I can't, I can't not. Do it. it was, it was that Mister and Mrs. Smith movie, man. They they play a movie together, and then that's <laughs> that it. Because, it. Because it was Jennifer Aniston. They were together, right? And then yep. they have a movie together, and then that's. It. But I hear they get back together. I don't know. I don't know. I, like a follow celebrity gossip. Yeah. You know, like <laughs> but if it, I don't know. But I, that's one of those things. It's like you don't care, but you know it. Yeah. Like, there's just certain things. It's like my daughter tells me the names of the My Little Ponies. I think I'm going to fuck about My Little Ponies, but I know their names. Well, at least I know you're not a brownie. Right? It's, my daughters get so Wait, pissed. Wait, are you a brownie? No. Okay. My, Let me my, sure. my daughter doesn't even play. My, my daughter has a. Uh, her brother's seven years older than her, so she, she's a total tomboy. She never played with Barbies right. or anything like that. Right. I never had that. My daughter brings me a My Little Pony, and it's got like four little diamonds or three little diamonds on its butt. She's like, guess my what, the po- what? Guess my pony's name. I'm like, it's a rhombus butt. Diamond ass. And she's like, no. And I was like, it's got rhombuses on its butt. <laughs> like, it's I thought it diamond butt. Diamond <laughs> butt is yeah. what you're looking for. <laughs> like, it's it's named something else. But also, there's a My Little Pony. There's a pony called uh, Twilight Sparkle. But my daughter, before she learned, learned how to, to talk correctly, she was walking around calling it Toilet Sparko. <laughs> oh, man. That's good. So, so now, even now, my wife will walk up, and my, my other daughter's playing with, you know, my daughter's, my wife's like, hey, which one of those is Toilet Sparkle? And she'll look, and she'll be like, this one. <laughs> and with that, we're going to take a break real quick for you to listen to some heavy metal from Iron Maiden, and then we'll maybe a, a sponsor uh, spot, and then something. we're coming back with some new business. We shall fight in France, we shall fight on the seas and oceans, we shall fight with growing confidence and growing strength in the air, we shall defend our island, whatever the cost may be, we shall fight on the beaches, we shall fight on the landing grounds, we shall fight in the fields and in the streets, we shall fight in the hills. We shall never surrender.
amped up. Oh yeah, always. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> okay, so you don't sound like you just listening listen to Iron Maiden. <laughs> <laughs> you, sound, you sound like you you just bypassed that entire thing. I don't even know head. what song I just listened to, but I know it's badass. That's that's, that's how it works. You might not know the title, but you know it's good. <laughs> Okay, the, the only big news out of horror this week, uh, really, is uh, Rob Zombie decided to release some photos from uh, Free From Hell, the uh, the uh, Devil's Rejects uh, sequel. Mm-hmm. Oh, And from cool. the pictures that he has released, okay, he released a picture of Otis, of Baby, and of Captain Spaulding. It looks as though they survived the first one and ended up in jail because the pictures are of them incarcerated especially you can tell the one Captain Spaulding you can see bars in the background and everything so apparently they're in some prison setting at the beginning of the movie and that's where the movie starts off from so looks like it's not going to be a supernatural type thing like we had predicted and it may just end up being that they survived it and they're they break out of jail or something like that there's somebody I don't remember who it was somebody on one of the nerd groups was like talking about how if it's if it is supernatural, if they somehow come back from the dead, then that's just like cheap and shitty, and it's like completely unoriginal and stupid. Completely and, unoriginal. And I'm like, okay, well, first, first, about? first of all, the title says Three from Hell, and that's pretty explanatory. But, but second of all, you have entire franchises where killers come back from being burnt and shot and decapitated and drowned and exploded and launched into space. Yeah, and and there's really no explanation for how or why they come back, except for they do, and everybody's yeah. like, "This is awesome! Yeah. Buy the popcorn." You take you take some characters who said themselves, "We're here because of the devil, and we're here to do the devil's work." Yeah. and you you don't think, especially whenever you've got that they're working for a guy named Doctor Satan, Satan, who's been alive for like 130 years. This is under their house, right? Yeah, he was on the ground. Yeah, he was on the ground. There. Catacombs. That 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 these these characters couldn't just get shot up and like in like in a Bugs Bunny cartoon, they get shot up, they fall into hell, and the devil's like, nope, you got more work to do. You got more work to do, huh. and you go, okay, well, done. All you got to do is get them out of the car and un like they can still be riddled with bullets, but they could just be zombie fireflies and write the story. Go, yeah, yeah. nobody gives a shit. I mean, <laughs> Except for this like guy, you I'm like, said, they're working for Doctor Satan. And the yeah. other thing is, uh, isn't that the storyline to Spawn? I yeah, mean, what so the fuck movies, is yeah. that guy has problem? Does, does he think Spawn is derivative and bullshit too? <laughs> Everything's derivative. That's the thing. Is ever it's how you do it, man. Yeah, it's like you make you make likable characters and or dislikable characters, scary people. Yeah. I mean, House of a Thousand Corpses is pretty much the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It's how you yeah. do it. Mm-hmm. I mean, come on. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. I've been I've been watching. I, I follow uh, Bill Mosley. Um, There's going to be a good, good, one, I think. good old Chop Top. I follow all of them on. I mean, uh, Devil's Facebook Rejects was his best movie in my opinion, so I'm really looking forward to the sequel. That, uh, it, it looks like it's made fun. Okay, let's have some fun. You know I like poop stories. I have them oh, every, I like shit stories too. Uh, about every other episode, I got something about somebody <laughs> shitting or something. Okay, all right. <laughs> this particular one caught my eye because of the, the the headline. Okay, I had to delve further into the story. <laughs> you know, so headline supposed to catch your attention to make you want to read the rest of the story. And the headline reads: Woman furiously shits on floor of Tim Hortons, throws it at employees. And when I read it, the first thing I thought. How do you furiously shit? Yeah. How well, is that possible? This woman showed me it is possible to furiously shit. They have a video she of her shitting. a video of her shitting, and it flies out faster than you can imagine. I'm talking, it's like a quarter-pound hot dog-sized turd. Just oh. out the tongue, but, but it, it was a full solid turd. It wasn't like some diarrhea. Oh, no, it was solid, dude. She, oh. she picked it up like a javelin. So right. She grabbed it like a javelin and threw it like a fucking quarterback throwing a touchdown at this employee. And what's funny is, you know, you're, you're probably imagining some drunk chick, you know, coming from broad daylight. This is like, broad daylight, this is like but she might be drunk. Afternoon, this woman gets in an argument at Tim Hortons with employees, leans back against the wall for leverage, and kind of bends <laughs> down, pulls her pants her knees, and just, bam, furiously shits. Tim Hortons, so this is in you know, Canada? It's Canada, yeah. This <laughs> occurred in Canada. How pissed off do you have to be? I thought Canada, the Canadians are polite and I was going to say, how pissed shit, off do you have not- to be to piss off a Canadian that bad? 
Like, <laughs> yeah, so look for the video of the yeah. woman furiously shitting at Tim Hortons. <laughs> they must have not had, like, organic avocados or something. <laughs> In a Tim Hortons of all places. Oh. Okay, Florida story. Always love those. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, there shit. was a power outage in Florida. In, uh, in Lake Worth, Florida. So they sent the city. You know how nowadays you get messages, you know, on, on your, your text messages through the utilities companies and shit like that happens. This was the message that was received by employees. And they're investigating to see who the hell sent this message out. But power outage and zombie alert for residents of Lake Worth and Terminus. There are now far less than 7,380 <laughs> customers involved due to extreme zombie activity. <laughs> Restoration time uncertain. <laughs> that is awesome. That was the oh, actual man. message that these people received. Uh, how, many, how many people uh, loaded up their <laughs> shotguns and sitting on their front porch? No kidding. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, let's see, this is a good one. Do you hear it? There's zombies going around. Yeah. A Florida man who looked a lot like an evil version of DMX the rapper. It's just weird. He that dude like, looked like Darth Maul. Facial tattoos. You read this one? Did you see <laughs> yeah. this one? This dude was arrested for jumping on top of a playground gym set and yelling at the kids, telling them in a very vulgar way where babies come from. <laughs> Like, yeah, but he, he, he used some other terms for pussies. His, for his pussies yeah, <laughs> yeah. He decided. Thirty-year-old Otis Dwayne Ryan decided to go ahead and let the kids know, or give a lesson of the birds and the bees for whatever reason, <laughs> and was arrested for disorderly conduct. Wow. You're just sitting around drinking your 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 Bush Tall Boy out in front of the convenience store, smoking your Newport Lucy, and you're like. I gotta go drop <laughs> some knowledge on these chills. <laughs> drop some truth bombs. Okay, last story. This example of us just people can't think. Sometimes they they just automatically do what they're told, and they don't look at, for context. This family goes. They want to order a graduation cake for their son, who graduated with honors, four point eight nine GPA or some shit. So they order a graduation cake from a Publix that says, "Congrats, Jacob." Summer come loud, class of 2018. They censored out the cum in <laughs> summer come loud. And they actually, the cake says summer, the dot, 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 loud on the cake itself. Because of their automatic censorship, yeah. C-U-M is a word that is not supposed to be put on cakes. <laughs> Well, that just shows illiteracy. That's what that is. That shows ignorance. You know, I said this before on my uh, podcast, uh, but like, if you're gonna, if, sorry, I'm sorry, I know, I like just <laughs> jumping in here. No, but if you're gonna censor because uh, you're ignorant and don't know what the hell people are talking about, that's on you. That's when you that's need to call you. somebody. Well, you got employees that you give them instructions and they can't think outside of that. And They're my, my favorite example is Virus Vodka was at Comic Palooza one year. Uh, Alfonso Ribeiro uh, from uh, Fresh Prince of Bel Air, Carlton. You know mm-hmm. what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. Me and him go to get a shot at the virus vodka thing. The girl looks at him and says, "I need your ID." And he says, "I don't have a wallet on me. I'm not sure if you recognize me, but I'm Alfonso Ribeiro." She goes, "Oh yeah, I know who you are, but I have to see your ID first." And that's someone who was told, "Make sure you ID everybody," and would not think outside okay, of that. Like, I mean. I, I, I get that. I get that. P- p- people are told to do that, but come on, isn't there some some common sense or some some basic knowledge? Like, well, like they don't want to use it. They, what, just what, they don't know to use the, it. The fact is, though, because I, I deal with this in my job. So, be that in, in my company, we we do promotions, and the people that we talk to have to. There, there are certain things. They have to be over twenty one. They have to have a valid ID. It has to be a U.S. ID, period. And it doesn't matter if it's the President of the United States with his entourage. If he does not have an ID for me to scan, I cannot speak to him. But you don't have to scan anything in this case, though. Well, no, but the I could, I could go to my company's headquarters, and I could set it on fire, and I would probably get a written reprimand. But if I promote to a customer that does not have an ID or doesn't present an ID, I can get terminated on the spot. Well, Randy, Randy ran was, over. Randy Passarelli was, ran over. A guy from see, he's got, was like, he's give got, him a shot. Yeah. <laughs> he, he's got that 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 pull. That, yeah. that rep. She she working for her eight dollars an hour and told. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> see, I'd probably risk it. Yeah, I mean, you know, but still, like it's that. just. I, I know that. for a fact though. There's certain things like. 
you got to think Alfonso Rivera is an is an undercover cop trying to bust you, though. He's a really good actor, though. <laughs> you don't you, know, you don't know who he might be being. Oh man, I was actually like, he's not that good of an actor. I'm joking. <laughs> and, and, and I worked at a call center where they 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 beat down policy down your throat like it's you know, on a daily basis. You, this is the script you read, but I was like, but these steps and technical support, these steps like unplugging your whatever and turn it <laughs> this isn't working this is bullshit I just jump right through past this I don't do that I don't tell them I'm, I'm jumping past this I worked here for how long I'm doing this you know I have good numbers I love when I go to tech support <sighs> I'm like okay so this is my problem and they're like, I hear them like start to inhale and I'm like now let's just assume that I've already unplugged everything I've restarted the network mm-hmm, I've cleared mm-hmm. my cookies uh, I've, just, mm-hmm, I've done mm-hmm. all of this other stuff so let's go ahead and jump to step six mm-hmm. Hey, uh, sir, uh, I'm going to need you to reset your receiver Yeah, and go ahead and unplug it, please. See, the way I always have to start off those calls is, look, I just want you to know I'm not mad at you. If I start cursing, it's not you. (laughs) But I will start cursing in a bit. The alarm at my house went off. We were down at the, the neighborhood pool, and my wife gets a phone call from the alarm company that... One of our doors has been opened. Not just sensor, but, you know, like... Well, there happens to be a cop at the pool. He lives in the neighborhood, but he was just happened to be there. And he's in uniform, and he's got his car. And uh, she's like, you know, you're going to go check it out? He's like, you want me to come with you? I was like, sure. So I was like, go to my house and unlock the door. And he pushes me out of the way and, like, walks in, like, gun drawn, and, like, clears the house. Just... Wow. And I'm sitting there being like, this is pretty awesome. You know, like, <laughs> pretty, um, and um, clears the house. And I end up calling the alarm company. And I'm like, yeah. And they're like, okay, well, we need to do a sensor test. But first, can I get a little information from you? And the you know, cop's standing there next to me. And I'm like answering the questions and stuff. And he's like, okay, well, you know, we can maybe go ahead and clear. I was like, and then they finish everything. And they're like, <laughs> Can you give us a little feedback? How did we do? And I was like, well, next time I think there's somebody in my house and I call in to tell you, you probably want to get the the questionnaire done after you shut off the alarm and <laughs> like do all this other stuff. Like, like sa- save all the advertising for later. Like yeah. right now, I need to. <laughs> I was hoping it would have been that uh, the cop was standing there and she wanted to know what your password was and you had to say "fuck the police." <laughs> <laughs> no, that would have been better, but. <laughs> you a dick, cop. That's that's my password for the Lord. <laughs> no good. No you good. You turn your head. Eat a dick, cop. <laughs> can't hear you, sir. Could you speak up, please? No. <laughs> I can't. Blue lives. <laughs> fuck that. Oh man. No. 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 I love you guys. Oh man. Poor guys. They deal with so much shit. Oh yeah. yeah. They do. So they do. much. I work with them on a daily basis on my day job, so this is cool. Unfortunately, some get jaded because they deal yeah, with so happens. much shit. Mm-hmm. What's next? I'm done. You're done? Yeah. Okay. Let's go to a commercial and we'll come back. Unless did anybody die that I didn't think of? Not By the time you hear this, I probably died of, uh, <laughs> of uh, alcohol poisoning. <laughs> so if you're hearing me... <laughs> I I had a good run. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So we'll be back with some Ripley's Believe It or Not. Yes. It's what business and government runs on. 
There always seems to be another form to fill out in duplicate. And that's when paper clips come in handy. But you can do more with a paper clip than stick paper together. If you know the secret of an astounding trick. The revelation of that secret will be the first stop on our journey into the strange, the bizarre, the unexpected. Wow, that, yeah. was, that was that was an erection that just popped up right, <laughs> right as I pushed the button. <laughs> was that the Ripley page by for Ripley. John Cock? What was that? That was a uh, a Hindu uh, temple, big, big temple. Yeah. Uh, that that is a phallic symbol, my friend. Yes, it that is. is. There are plenty of them in this world. Scott Scotty has a uh, Ripley's pop up book that he's going through. As soon, as soon as I hit the record button, he opened it, and this <laughs> giant phallus Surprise. just kind of popped up <laughs> on the table. I'm like, okay, what is that? So, who here has been to a Ripley's Museum? I have. All, right. All hands were raised. Yes, yes. San Antonio. So, New Orleans and San Antonio. San Antonio and St. Augustine, the first one. When oh. I was a kid, we went on a road trip. The original. Yeah, when we went on a road trip, uh, when I was a kid, we went to uh, Disney World. So we drove from Houston, drove to Florida, went from Florida up into Virginia, went back through like Tennessee, Arkansas, and back down. It was a giant family road trip. It was very Griswoldian. Um, Sounds like it. Kind of sucked because my mom actually, for whatever reason, I don't know why she had had to have it done right before we went on vacation, but she went to the doctor and she got a blood test. She had dr- blood drawn out of uh, her left arm. This is your mom? My mom. Okay, I'll spread the jokes. And she 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 had a uh, blood drawn, but whenever they did it, they went through the vein instead of just into the vein. Oh, damn. Okay. And she had this giant black bruise from basically the, the upper part of her wrist all the way up to her shoulder and was Jesus. in absolute pain the whole trip. The, I mean, poor... I mean... as, as horrible, man. As, yeah, dude. And she was not having she it. She couldn't enjoy my, anything. When me and my sister would start fighting in the back, she was like, immediately like, shut up. Mm. It was like, oh, poor mom. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, my dad had this whole agenda planned, and this is, you know, so we go to Disney World, and we're driving back up, you know, to St. Augustine, it's the oldest town in America, at Ripley's Museum, and God, I remember walking through that thing, and it was all mannequins, and, you know, they, they looked pretty damn real, like the shrunken heads. No, they were freaky, man. You know, that kind of stuff. I mean, I remember walking through that thing just being like, wow. And my dad, of course, being who he was it's like you have to remember son that this is all real this is all stuff that this guy collected to put in his museum like I'm like that guy's not real he's like no that's a mannequin but that guy existed yeah. there's pictures of him right there see and uh I'm like whoa that is awesome so Ripley's was fun as a child like like I said earlier growing up as a child of weekly world news it just it enhanced that experience that whole lore right well we were talking before the show how you can't the, there, there wasn't a comment section at the bottom of the newspaper that's like, this, this is, this is untrue. This is sucks. This, this sucks. This is debunked. <laughs> this, this is bullshit. Like, no, no, you, you, you would just read the story and you took it for what it was. And in some cases, you're like, I, I don't like believe it or not. I don't know if I believe that. But, but that other, was part of the love, man. That was part of what made it great. Be able to believe in it. Yeah, yeah. And then what was cool about Robert Ripley is he. Uh, he took it upon himself to travel the world and find all these oddities that we'd never know about mm-hmm. if it wasn't for him. And he found some oddities, to say the least. One of the most famous oddities he has, he got in trouble. Like, he, he was getting death threats for pointing this out. But, like, in the back in the 30s, he pointed out that America did not have a national anthem. And the Star-Spangled Banner was the national anthem. That's what everybody sang, you know, yeah. put their hand over their heart and stuff. But there, there had never been any kind of congressional act. There was never any kind of official thing. It was just kind of a, it was a meme, basically. It was just something yeah. that everybody did and everybody accepted. Well, that's true, though, right? It was absolutely true. Because if I recall correctly, and this is probably just a bunch of bullshit fed to me, I'm regurgitated right now, but uh, I believe that was because during, what, the Cold War, it was our response to, oh, we... Uh, 
we need to have some sort of national anthem. Well, something. this was back in the 30s. It oh, was the like, 30s. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he, he basically was like, you know, there's no there's no national anthem. And America went America on, on poor, oh, on poor Ripley. And, um, but it was proven. It was true. It was like there was, there was, there was a song that everybody sang and assumed it was the national anthem, but it was no official national anthem. Mm. So Congress, in session, went ahead and made the Star Spangled Banner the official national anthem. But it was because he pointed out, it's like, hey, did you know this? <laughs> there's, there's too many people who didn't believe that. They thought he was some kind of a, a traitor. Kook. Yeah. <laughs> now, I wonder if uh, those death threats came from, uh, like, uh, CIA officials. Somebody had sense. Back then, when I mean, you had to make a death threat, because not a whole lot of people even had phones, <laughs> you had to be you had to be hopping mad to go get a piece of paper and sit there and be like, "Dear Mister Ripley, <laughs> fuck you." I gotta tell you what. When though, I see I you on the street, I am going to kill you <laughs> sincerely. Mr. Johnson. You and then tie fold it, it up. You tie it to a pigeon's leg. Fold it up. <laughs> oh my god, that would be good. Address it, stamp it, and put it in the mail and just wait. To stew. Wait <laughs> for the reply. Wait. Oh god, do you guys remember? This, is, <laughs> <laughs> this has nothing to do with Ripley's, but I think it was on Nickelodeon. It was Nickelodeon. It was one of those, like, on you can't do that on television or something. Where somebody was writing a uh, breakup letter, and it, it was like really, really fast motion, but it was like it was like I don't remember if it was a guy to girl or girl to guy, but it was like, dear so and so, you really broke my, and then he like wadded up and throw it, dear so and so, the way you and wadded up, dear so and so, and he just like did this like five times, and it's like getting more and more frantic, and it's like. Dear so and so, you make me feel like this. He gets a uh, can of tuna fish and dumps it on the page and like squishes it all <laughs> into the page, folds it up and then squishes it out and then shoves it in the envelope and drops it in the mail. <laughs> it's like now I get my fair I've share always, of hate mail. I've always kind of wanted to do that. <laughs> just like drop, drop, like just soak a piece of paper in tuna fish water, and fold it up and drop <laughs> it in the mail. Feelings. Wow, these are my feelings. <laughs> this is how I feel. <laughs> <laughs> That's a way to express yourself. Now I get my fair share of hate mail and, and hate comments. I promise you, if I receive that, I will read it on air. <laughs> I will because you put that much effort in it. I'm gonna read it. <laughs> you make me feel like like that's a troll message. I will like understand. mailed tuna fish water. I feel like you went that extra mile. I'll give you the attention. You deserve it. Uh, so, what were some of your favorite? Ripley's the the me- most memorable ones. The most memorable one was what's the tallest man in the world. What was his name? Uh, they had his picture and his. I remember they had his shoe in one museum. They had his footprint. The dude was huge. But uh, damn, Robert something. I can't remember his full name, but I just, oh, I just wanted to call him Shorty. <laughs> but he was he was like he was like seven eight or some shit like that, and they yeah, had like a huge life size picture of him with the, his shoe. That the, I remember that standing out the most at the museum itself. Then of course like the shrunken heads, the replica of mm-hmm. the fish boy because the original fish boy was, merman was found by Robert Ripley. Mm-hmm. He brought that monstrosity back. Was that was that true? He had a it, it, whether or not it was it was falsified. He had the body. There's a picture of it in here. As a matter of fact. I think yeah. it was true, man. He it was said, something. That, this was, was Whether or not Otis put it together, Otis Firefly put it together. That's whenever they lived in. You, <laughs> there used to be a time when you could live in a world where you could actually get a monkey. And then. We like, talked about that the other day. You yeah. can still get a monkey. But Yeah, but you could melt the flesh off of it and oh. then sew it to a fish. That was it right there. I mean. It has, <laughs> it's a tail and everything. You could still do that. You just could have put it on Facebook. Yeah. You might I mean, get a couple of downvotes on that. If yeah, you yeah, do that. yeah. Well, some guys that tried to uh, to pass off that fake uh, Bigfoot body uh, a few years ago. I don't know if you remember that. They had it like encased in a plastic plexiglass thing. And uh, they took it on tour, and somebody realized it was like a gorilla suit that they had made, <laughs> fashioned into. But see, you just say, I'm looking at this fishboy picture. Some people come in, uh, look at this. They'll give it to a scientist. They'll look at it, and be like, "Oh, this isn't real. This isn't legit." Yeah, because this is what, whatever. But I'm like, what are you talking about? There's all sorts of 
you there's all know. sorts of creatures out there yeah. we don't we don't know about. I mean, they're still finding new organisms every day. Every, every day, day they find new species. Yeah, and every day a few of them go extinct too. Yeah. yeah. So, what what's to make you know that everything that exists? It's one of those things that we talk about on our show very often, especially with the cryptid episodes. Is oh, cryptids are fun. It's, it's one of those cryptids things. Like anytime somebody wants to argue about something, they'll say, "Oh, well, you're anti-science." But the funny thing is. No, man. Sci- science, by its very definition, is ever changing. It's it's got to so. it's got to be open to new ideas, or else it's no longer science. At that point, it becomes religion. It becomes faith. Yeah. yeah. So, to to say that science has not found a Loch Ness monster, that is, it's true. To say the Loch Ness monster does not exist because science says it doesn't. Well, you can't that, conclusively that, that, say that. That's not that. That is not a. a that's not true. Because if science says it doesn't exist, then they close the door on discovery, mm. and therefore, once it gets found, like the coelacanth, they're going to be like, "Holy crap, <laughs> we were wrong this whole time." Well, the chances of there actually being a plesiosaur that exists somewhere in the depths of the oceans, there's a chance that that, that can happen. You can't totally dismiss. You it. can't prove a negative. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> I mean, it's possible that it could happen. They're very much. Very possible, just like how it's very possible. I'm going to say this: that there could be a Sasquatch walking around. People are like, oh, that's big, Bigfoot bullshit. You know, when I did the uh, with well, the monster exists issue of Deadman's Tone, whatever. You know, um, you know, I was really using like uh, cryptid, uh, like, like Bigfoot, like what if to, to really market it, and people were like, oh, that's bullshit. It's like, no, no, no. I I talked to him. I was like, why do you think it's why do you think it's bullshit? Oh, because we have satellites that can see every inch of the Earth. No, that's not, that's not even true. true. That's you not even true. See through the you, know, of trees. you can see every inch of the earth, but you can't see, like you said, the through canopy, the canopy of the trees, the yeah. forest, the thick forest. And just, just because you see every inch of the earth doesn't mean you can see everything, especially on the ground level. Everything that's down low, yeah, inside of caves. And yeah, like that. yeah. And one thing we always talk about on the show whenever we're talking about cryptids is. If Bigfoot is smart enough to still exist, he's smart enough not to be caught on film. And he knows how to hide from people. That's possible. You know, it, it, to have survived this long, he knows what he's doing. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Just like in the swamps of Louisiana, there's, there's alligators that are hundreds of years old that, you know, mm-hmm. are just these monsters that know how to not get killed. You're you not know? going to eat them. They're right. not, not going to be fried gator. Right. <laughs> You're not getting them. You're getting the, the babies. Right. Yeah, I mean, there, there there are there are too many things that are constantly being discovered, and I mean, even even down into the micro side where they're like, oh, like think things like DNA and like what is inside of DNA, and then how does DNA affect the organism and stuff? It's like they're making these crazy discoveries about all kinds of things all the time that. They get mad that whenever they they say these things are occurring, that your mind's not blown. Your mind's not blown that we just figured out that DNA can do this? You're like, well... I'll tell you why their mind's not blown. They're looking on their phones. They're on their Twitter. Right. They're on their Instagram. <laughs> they're looking at, like, thick pics, yo. That's what they're looking at, man. They're looking at that <laughs> shit, man. Like, and even I sound like an old man sitting at, yo. What the fuck? <laughs> that's like a 90s thing. We, dude, the, sl- the slang that runs around through here, it's like, it's like, bro. It start, starts <laughs> off like we were joking, and later on we realize it's just become a tick. Like, it's, just what, it's just what we say. <laughs> so I started calling everybody Hoss. I don't know why. Where did I come up with that? Hoss? Like, what's up, Hoss? <laughs> like, I guess I just had a dream. Everybody was on the Ponderosa. <laughs> it was Little Joe and Hoss. <laughs> So, there was something the other day I saw on Facebook. Somebody was asking, uh, you could have one, tele- like five different t- things to watch on a desert island. What would one be? And somebody actually said Gunsmoke because there were like a thousand episodes. You could watch that forever. But they only did like a hundred <laughs> of them. And then, yeah, no. yeah. You kept <laughs> the repeating. The same ones over and over again. Yeah, I always hate those questions because, like, what would you eat on a desert island? Everybody's almost default answer is pizza. Like well, pizza gets old after like two slices, so if that was the the food, well, it depends on what kind of pizza. But for me, and 
this has been proven for the last like several years. Is like breakfast tacos are evergreen. <laughs> oh, <laughs> breakfast t- fuck like, yeah! Like I can eat, I, I can eat those things three meals a day, <laughs> seven days a week. Now, <laughs> does does this come with like a uh, authentic uh, Mexican lady that can make it for me? <laughs> so if I say like breakfast taco, uh, uh, barbacoa, yeah. Oh man, that, be, that shit is crazy. Get on like, a desert like, island with some tacos. Be hit El Rey for Taco it'd Tuesday be today, on. dude. It'd be on. And, and my, my mother-in-law, she, she's 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 white. She, she's as white as you can be. But she was married in Hispanic. <laughs> I thought the first time I met her, I thought she was Mexican. I swear to God. But no, she's white. But here's the thing: she makes the greatest barbacoa tacos you can get. <laughs> it's delicious. And like, like she brings it over on days. I'm like, I'm eating. Like, I'm like, I ate like eight. I'm like, are you, are you full? Like, no, I'm not. Because the way you had barbacoa before, yeah, right? Yeah. And like the way it goes down your throat and in your stomach, it's just like it like goes a black hole. I don't know. It's just, <laughs> it goes nowhere. Yeah, and mom's like, did you eat? You're like, I had not enough. It My ass will find out. <laughs> now, do you remember watching the uh, the '90s iteration of uh, the Ripley's Believe It or Not television program? From time to time, in the 90s, I would say from about 92 to about now, I haven't watched TV much at all. Yeah. Um, uh, and, and the South Park. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> South Park, Batman animated series, oh, various good. various X-Files episodes, and, you know, <clears throat> movies here and there. But, yeah, I was, I was too heavy metal to watch, right. watch TV, but I, I do remember some of the episodes. And they were cool. That one, what, what tripped me out about the, whenever they brought the show back on TBS or wherever it was, it, it was like an extended play of the Jim Rose Circus. Do you remember the Jim Rose Circus? They used to open for Nine Inch Nails for the yeah. concert, but it was a modern-day freak show. It was basically just people piercing themselves and putting hooks in their backs and hanging up from cables and stuff. And But that's what Ripley's Believe It or Not ended up becoming. Yeah, just people. Pretty much. Yeah, those were the current oddities for that time. Because John Ripley pretty much, Robert Ripley pretty much found everything there was to find. <laughs> it wasn't so, anything like they could the, pick up. That's where you got like the lizard man. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. The, the guy with his tongue and everything. The yeah. tattooed guys and the puzzle guy. Like, you've seen that guy with the puzzle pieces tattooed all over. Like, yeah. I met that guy. He was a really nice guy. You meet that guy. He's just like, oh, hey, man, what's going on? And you're like, you've got little, like, thousand, thousand piece puzzle pieces tattooed over your entire body. And that takes body. a lot of money. It takes yeah. a lot of money, a lot of time, and a lot of pain, and a lot of blood to just be like, oh, hi. <laughs> How did the Jim Rose Circus still touring? I don't know. We have to look that up. Because he, he actually, he, that was the first celebrity I ever had following me on Facebook, and I was so excited whenever I got that notification that Jim Rose was following me. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. I've got Robert da- Davey from the Goonies follow Scary Dad. <laughs> remember, remember him? Mm-hmm. Bad guy? I'm like, mm, love that dude. <laughs> I had the, uh, the bully... From a Christmas story, follow oh, me. Cool, I was going to have him on a show. He said it was going to be on. He never came on. Uh, I was going to ask him. Probably the same question he answered before. What was it like bullying the fucking blue-eyed kid, man? What the hell? What was wrong with you? Dude, I just want to know how they filmed that scene of when, whenever Ralphie snaps out. Oh, he beat the shit out of him. Because when dude. you watch that, that, that is like... I've timed it before. Because on TNT, when it goes into the, the 24-hour cycle, you can watch that several times. Yeah. When Ralphie starts beating on that kid with the, his shoes are tied to his hands and he's he's beating him, or his gloves are tied to his hands yeah. or whatever, but you see the flop. He hits him at least 40 times, and that scene goes for like 45, 50 seconds of him just pounding that kid's face in the in the snow. That would be a good question. Maybe, maybe I can find him on Twitter. Hey, maybe so. Like, yeah, yeah. How did it feel? To have to shoot. How many reach punches? How many times? How many times? Angles. Let's do that again, but this time let's. Let's have the camera over here. Lay down in the snow. Get your ass whooped from some more. How many times did that boy punch you in the face? <laughs> how many takes did that take? So in the Saint Augustine one, I don't. I don't remember in the San Antonio, but they in the Saint Augustine they had a real Iron Maiden. Oh wow! The um, and I, dude, I remember being a little kid, and you know that that. Same thing that I told Kane Hodder in, in the Jasons. It's like, when I was a little kid, my, my mind would just go. It's like I could watch something scary or I could see something scary, but it wasn't until later when I was by myself and my mind would just wander and I'd just be like, why? Why would somebody think of something so horrible? Like, so, the Iron Maiden It's like look, looks like a casket, basically, of a lady. 
You know, it's like a, mm-hmm. it opens up and it's full of spikes. And it, at the bottom, it's got like a drain. So they'd put you in the Iron Maiden and they'd slam the door and the spikes would basically impale you by like an inch or so on all sides and just hold you there until you bled out. I got somebody you need to talk to. <laughs> I got somebody you need to talk to about and, this. And then whenever oh. they were done, they would pull a little thing and the spikes would retract and then drop you into the river below. <laughs> It's like, who thinks of this? Well, remember yeah. we did we did an episode on uh, torture devices. And mm-hmm. they, they there's some sick sick minds back in the day, dude. Yeah, they come yeah. up with there's, some there's shit. this collar that has a spike. They wrap it around your neck and it like pokes there. Don't want to draw on my chin, and like that. And you, <sighs> yeah, well, no, it's like the super sharpened spike, but you can't move your head forward by any little bit, or it's gonna go up through your. Chin. Well, it was a reality TV back then. <laughs> well, I mean, for the well, kings, there was the, there was for the, the one. It was it, w- it wasn't like a pyramid, but it was a, it was a cone that they would impel you through your ass with, and you would just and they put yeah. weights on you to pull you down. And the thing that would kill you, remember, they wouldn't clean it <clears> from one person to the next, so you'd end up getting infections and stuff sliding down this cone. I got, and that's how you'd end up dying. It was fucking disgusting, this. dude. Yeah, and you follow this, this chick. Her name was Kelly Evans. She's on Twitter, one of the writers I work with. She's she's she, she's a huge, like medieval history buff. You know what? I, I didn't shoot the shit with her about like torture devices. I really should, but I think if you talk to her. Oh man, she will tell you whether or not that was actually used and how much it was used, and who was who was the person who implemented it. She's she's pretty knowledgeable, man. Pretty knowledgeable. That's, that's my go-to person. I'll have to check her out because. What yeah. was the Viking one where they would fillet you and like put your ribs inside out? The, the that was called the. Um, it was like a bird or something. They it was that. the eagle. Yeah. It was the. Oh, um, shit. They they actually did it in the Vikings TV show. Just. Um. I, it's it's something it's it's called the something eagle, but essentially what they do is they would cut you down the back of your spine. Um, and they'd remove your ribs from your spine, and then they'd lay them oh. open to your arms, and so then like wings. And then they would pull your lungs out oh, the back man. and lay them up over your shoulders. Oh. And um, dude, they come up with this shit, dude. It's like who's thinking of this, man? Yeah. And in well. the in the Vikings TV show, because I was always like, okay, so how did they do this? Because they didn't have like like bolt cutters. So how did they cut the ribs off of the spine? Right? Like, because of course the guy's living, so. You know, you got guys squirming around. This sucks. I mean, eventually he's gonna die. But, 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 but like, how would I do it? Like, if I was, if I was like, okay, well, this is what I'm gonna do to you. How would I go ahead, go about removing your ribs from your spine? I would use a bolt cutter, right? Yeah. They didn't have those. In the Vikings TV show, he cuts cuts down on both sides of the spine with a uh, with a knife to open the skin. That would have to be a super sharp knife. Then he man. gets his axe. And goes down the spine with his axe, like 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 if you've ever got a branch that you're gonna yeah, cut yeah. The, the branches off for firewood. Oh, he just he just like holds it, holds it on, puts his hand on his shoulder and he's like thuck thuck thuck. thuck now thuck. granted, granted, these Vikings have a lot more time than we have today. I mean, they, they don't like I said they don't have TV rea- reality <laughs> TV. They're able to sit around and sharpen a knife to the point to where it could be as sharp as it could ever fucking yeah. could be. You know? Of course. But yeah, they didn't mess around. <laughs> there's the it was called the blood eagle that was what it was okay. called and it was, there was some crazy shit that we discovered they used as torture devices man it was wow yeah the, the hardcore history show had a one off yeah. called uh, painfotainment and it was all about torture and it was it was he's like I'm not gonna try to get into the gritty details but I kinda have to and then he would describe some of this stuff and you're just like oh god you know, I remember there was a Ripley's episode once where they talked about the uh, the people that every year for uh, for Easter they perform the crucifixion on themselves in Thailand or somewhere. Mm-hmm. That's some crazy shit, dude. They well, do this in the Philippines too. It might be the Philippines I'm thinking yeah. of. Well, there's cer- yeah, there's certain ones. Well, and that that's the cr- yeah they crucify themselves. Yeah, man. and that's one of the worst methods of torture there was. Well, man. and the thing is, and a lot of people they're like, okay, well, like. Jesus got crucified, and the thing is, Jesus is, Jesus Christ's crucifixion, as described in the Bible, is different from typical crucifixion. 
because yes. typical crucifixion was meant to last for days and days and days and days. They would not necessarily t- nail you to the cross. They would tie you up there and you couldn't get down. And you would slowly suffocate and starve. I mean, it was very painful and demeaning. And people would walk by and throw shit at you and stuff. Kind of like Conan on the Deadwood. L- literally shit. I mean, we're talking right. about like it, it was, it was the dark times. Right. It, it, was, it was a shit, bad, bad, bad thing shit. to yeah. be crucified. What made Christ's execution different from the typical one yeah. was that he was Jewish and they had the Passover. It was right. during Passover. And so they had to have it... They shouldn't be doing that. It should be like a day off. Right. But the Romans didn't give a shit. You can't take a day off or... But they had to have it done. They, they had to have it done and cleaned up and, 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 and figured out. Because it was the Jews that wanted Christ yeah, executed. Yeah. It, wasn't it was just the Romans. The Romans didn't give a shit. <laughs> Remember, if you if you dial it back a little oh, bit, yeah. the, 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 the Romans were like, we don't care about this guy. The Jews were like, kill this guy. The Romans were like, um, he hasn't really done anything that, that pisses us off, so we're going to offer you this cold-blooded killer in exchange for this guy because we really don't have anything to, 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 yeah. to execute him for. And the Jews were like, let him go kill this guy. They're like, okay, well, if we're going to do it, it has to be done so that he's dead by the end of the day because it's going to kill him on Friday. They couldn't do anything with it on Saturday, whatever. So... Very weird death, man. Exactly. You so, think about it. It's so 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 Christ, politics, so Christ was 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 whipped and tortured, and he, he had a whole bunch of stuff that made him bleed. So essentially, he bled out. Yeah, was the way that he died, which was different from a typical crucifixion, but it was a public spectacle, which made it all the more. Yeah, he was, and so yeah, people people follow. think about like, oh well, you know, he got got those nice crispy, you know, those nice pictures of of Jesus on the cross, and he's just kind of like, oh. But the reality was his skin was pretty much flayed off. He looked more like a, a character out of Hellraiser in, yeah. the, than any of your, your pictures that you see. And that was another thing was because it was in, it was, it was in occupied uh, Judea, so it was in Jerusalem. So even the Romans, they were like, okay, well, we have to do this by the laws of the land. So. Yeah. We're going to go ahead and get this done. That's why the, the two thieves on both sides of them, they went and they broke their legs so they'd go ahead and suffocate so they could get the action done because nobody could do anything on Saturday. That was... And you go, okay, man, you just really, really explain that, but people think that it's like, oh, well, every crucifixion was like that. Mm-hmm. No. Every and crucifixion, his, you might, you might, last, like yeah. you might last like four or five days. Yeah. You might last like four or five days, and uh, if you tried to sleep... That's when you would suffocate. Yeah. So you kept having to push yourself up to breathe. Yeah. And then like, oh, God. And that's one of the things, The Passion of the Christ hit. They, they, that's a brutal movie, man. It had really brought to light what actually happened as opposed to seeing, you know, the perfect body of Christ on the cross mm. nailed up. It was some brutal, brutal shit. Yeah, it was well, pretty nasty. Pe- people have a way of being extremely uh, creative when it comes to causing... Well, they're angry. Yeah. They're bitter. They're pissed no. off, man. They don't have any way to. They don't have. They don't have an outlet for it. But now we do, kind of, sort of. We you have to watch TV. TV, social media. We could. We could jack off more. I mean, come on. <laughs> man, there's plenty of stuff. I don't. Okay. I don't jack off the crucifixions, but uh, you, no, you, you don't say. You don't say. You No, I'm saying. No, 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 not crucifixions. <laughs> but I'm saying an outlet. An outlet for. An outlet for frustration is what I'm talking about. Uh, what was the about. was it the brass bowl, the one where they would put them in and set it on fire? Uh-huh. They heat it up, and you could hear the. It was designed to where the screams of the person inside would be amplified through the bowl. Oh wow! Yeah, they basically they roast them in this iron bowl. Yeah, the the funny thing about that one was, yeah, there was this this intertwined um, kind of horns inside the head of the bowl, and then. The guy would get into the bull, and they'd set it on fire, and his screams would like push out through. So it had like it was oh, like playing a horn. And that's the, cool. the inventor of the thing brought it to the to the king, and the king was like, "This is horrible. You get to be the first victim." So the guy who invented it got to be the first one set up in it. <laughs> well, that's only good. I mean, we're going, that's karma. Yeah, yeah, that's good stuff. I mean, the king was the one that was. Laughing about that shit. <laughs> He's like, I got this awesome new torture device. <laughs> Let's see how it works. So what did you think of Wang? 
Wang, the horn guy, I thought that was pretty cool. He's a unicorn. <laughs> <laughs> Real life human unicorn. You, yeah, he had this giant, like, 8 inch inch, horn, 13, 13 inch horn, inch horn yeah. sticking out the back of his head. So, and it was at the center of his head. So it wasn't like some kind of weird cyst that kind of grew. It was like, yeah, straight, it was like, like straight up devil horn or bull horn. It was, it was like, like purposely like, there, right up the back of his head. And if you Google him, there's pictures of other people that have similar things. <coughs> but you got to think it was probably the same material as like, let's say, a toenail or something. He has a picture of Wayne right there. Yeah, when I look at it, it does look like the same material as a toenail. It's kind of just going out the back of his head. It's just a really dirty ponytail. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so the, the, skeptics, got away. the skeptics would say, oh, that's that's <coughs> a really dirty ponytail, unwashed hair, like a like just a dread, just this matted. But gravity would cause it to fall. You know, this is like this has to be like bone or something. Or, but it tapers off at the end and everything. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, it's, yeah, it's it's wicked. Yeah. Speaking of the Vikings, you could cut that off and make a freaking uh, tankard out of it for drinking your mead. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I look at it, and the way they use stuff booting is they take a bull's horn and they hollow it out and have like a funnel. That would be perfect, actually, to that same purpose. What does it say about the guy? Sorry, I, was, I don't know what it says about him. But was, uh, I don't Keep. know. The, the horn looks legit. It looks legit. They had another guy I'm a scientist, at, the, I would at, know. The, at the museum. And he had a hole in his skull that he kept a candle in. Yeah, this lighthouse man. It's yeah, him right here. And that was the original picture they had drew of him back in the day. Okay. Yeah, that was lighthouse man that had a candle in the hole in his head. <laughs> He'd walk around at night with the candle lit. Can't run very fast. <laughs> <laughs> Robert we all Ripley, he found some shit. And what's funny is, you know, all these areas he'd go to, they'd accept him there and then there was he had a way with the people where he could find out all this you stuff. Know, you know how you do that? You know how you do that? I think I have an idea. You just you just ask him questions. They might understand him, but be like hopefully they understand English. <laughs> hope. Do y'all have anything weird? You got any uh, any weirdos? Or, the like, weirdest thing or, you got here? We got the guy with the horns to growing out of the back of his head. Like <laughs> you, you, oh, you might damn. get shot by the cannibals. I don't yeah. know man. He'd be like, You got anything weird? He'd be like, hey <laughs> Show me your tribe, man. How do y'all live? How do, you, how right. do y'all live? Ooh. It makes me think of the old Far Side what cartoon. What do you do? Where the dude with the big heads like roll it, floating down the river yeah, or, like, yeah. in, in headhunter territory and all the headhunters are like, whoa, look at that guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he found some stuff, man. That, like I said, he introduced the world to things that they never know existed. Well, they had the, I think. He was obsessed with it. He had the Megalodon jaws. Yeah. Like, I remember being a kid, of course, being obsessed with sharks and going in there and being like, this this thing used to exist, and it's the giant megalodon mouth that, you know, it would hold like four people in there. It's yeah. Like, oh, you just swallow them whole. They That's wouldn't... the reason why you didn't sell across the seas, man. That's <laughs> re- and this, the sunken head. heads, yeah. the shrunken heads, that, that was the thing of nightmares for me. Oh, yeah. See, I used to look at these books in, in grade school. You know, I I never owned one of these. You know, there's always some other kid like sneaking around, like like having hidden behind their textbook. I had like my dad's porno mags, but like they had they had their Ripley's. Like, what's that? What's that? Oh, this is a toenail guy, or this is a shrunken head guy, or this is the the fat guy. But the shrunken heads, those are creepy as hell. And because that's legit. Oh yeah, that's a hundred percent legit. Is it voodoo? Well, the way that the process, the way they do it is they remove them from the skull. Yeah. So you can't shrink a skull. They, yeah, they fillet no. the skin. So, and so they they cut them up the back and they basically just pull out the skull. Yeah. Like so you, like, like 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 you like you're skinning a kiwi. And then just like curing they, leather, they would sew it back up and then do cure they leave it. the brain? No, they tore the whole skull out and it's just the skin oh, that goes okay. around the head. That would be gnarly. They they'd put like they put whatever it was like as a as a. A mold, whether it's wood or oh. whatever it was, and put a mold and then wrap it around, and then I think they tan it, but then they'd soak it in water, like it would dry to a certain point, and then they'd soak it in water and stretch it, and then it would like shrink down a little bit, and like just. I tell you what, it works. 
if you were, let's say you were like a tribal guy, right? And you're walking around the woods, you're hunting, gathering something, and you were to see that, and it was one of your brethren. Oh yeah, you just like, like just like in the fuck. <laughs> what happened to that guy? The days of medieval Conan days, whenever they would yeah. take the take the they take over a village and then they hang everybody's head up by a pole on the way into the village to warn everybody. Mm-hmm. You know, this will happen to you. No way. You come this way. Mm-hmm. And another thing, he brought the anacondas and everything to the forefront. No, nobody. And what was cool is, you know, before then you had explorers that would go and find places and they document it and you could read about it and stuff. Robert Ripley took pictures and he brought samples back. You know, he went above and beyond what all these other guys did. And it was just, it was amazing the things he was, he would bring to back to the States. He was, he was an amazing, amazing man. <laughs> he found some shit. Oh, yeah, this stuff, like, the, what, the the disc, the disc and the lips. Yeah. And the... And the, the rings also, the rings with the, the neck. With the neck stretching. Like African, uh, African cultures, whatever, yeah. Very real. It happens. And it, it causes a problem. I mean, once you well, take... You think, you think things like this are so bizarre, but can you imagine being aliens, like, uh, 10,000 years from now? Aliens are going to come down, they're going to excavate American uh, grave sites... And most of the bones are going to be dust, and they're going to be like, for whatever reason, there's all of these little bags of silicone, like right in the chest area of <laughs> millions of of these of these creatures. Silicone here, plastic here, <laughs> there's like, there's like, the mouth. Yeah, it's like you know some some of these things. Like, well, I'm just thinking of like fake tits because. If you think about the way the body's structured and what happens when you die, okay, yeah, so yeah, if, you, yeah. if you have a joint replacement, that's fused to your bone. So they're going to look at, at somebody who's got a fake knee and be like, okay, these people were advanced enough to replace the knee. Kind of like we look at those skulls that have uh, holes in them that, okay, well, they did a, a, a brain surgery or at least yeah. a, a pressure relief. Like, ooh, they... they the aliens are going to be like, okay, so they were able to, to have prosthetics and stuff, but what is what the hell is up? Like, if you found a skeleton, because you look, uh. at, you look at a pile of skulls, you always assume all of them are male. Like, pretty much, if you look at a pile of skulls, you're mind and me, you don't think there's girls in there. It's well, just, it depends it, on the, well, it depends no, on the skull structure. Man. Look, look at the catacombs. <laughs> look at the catacombs. I don't know. At least 50% of those skulls belong to females. But you don't think that. You just right. think it's... A bunch of dead dudes. It's a bunch of dead dudes, yeah. You're going to go excavate coffins. Well, first of all, you're going to be like, why did they vacuum seal all their dead? Because that <laughs> doesn't make any sense. <laughs> but then the, the, the skeletons who have fallen apart, you know, it's like you got the silicone sitting on top of the rib cage. Once the skin rots away, it's going to kind of fall down by the arms. Yeah, and they've yeah. just got these little bags of salt water <laughs> but they put, sitting next to them. Is this some kind of, like, what What kind of ritual was this? <laughs> these people, there could be museums in the future with all... Like, they could open up King Tut's tomb. Is gonna be they're going to serve bags. drinks. <laughs> they're going to serve drinks in alien bars. And people are going to be walking around with, like, sacks of, uh, of saline, basically, being like... Yeah, it's it's some kind of old ancient ritual. I'm really in touch with the way the planets are aligning, and not understand that it is just pure vanity. This is an interesting <laughs> find that he had: uh, the blood bridge of the Caucasus. Uh, the mortar used in this bridge was mixed with the blood of slaves instead of water. Whoa! Uh, it's believed human blood is superior to all of the binding agents in cohesive strength. And as a result, this arc has withstood violent storms and floods for more than 1,600 years. Is human blood even binding? There's something adhesive about human blood. No, well, it's mixed with the mortar, so... Oh, well, yeah, I mean, you mix it with the mortar, it's going to be adhesive. Yeah. It's just water. I mean, not just water, Can you imagine how stinky that shit was before? Oh, yeah. Yeah. When they first made it, they're like... Christ, smelled of rot. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. The bridge stunk. (laughs) It flies all over it. Yeah, yeah. Decay and just nastiness. It's like... But it's been around for 1,600 years. carcass, man. At least that's the story they told them. (laughs) But... It makes for a good story. <laughs> and he used to find little people, the shortest person, the tallest person. He just went around looking for her. And little people is what he can call them, right? He can't call them midgets. I like midgets. Or people midgets. sliders is another good one. Or dwarves. 
You can call them dwarfs. They're but, not dwarfs. But dwarf and a little person are two different things. Mm -hmm. They are? Yep. Yep. What's a dwarf? Dwarfism. A dwarf dwarfism. They they're proportionate with their hands. That's midgets. Oh, I thought that's little people. What about a hobbit? I thought little people was where they had a, a human, a normal size head, but the body was different. What about a hobbit? That's fictional. So <laughs> what? What? <laughs> what? Little, no, little, I, little I think people it's became real. a PC thing before there was a medical term. It was hobbits a midget, are real. Hashtag it was a hobbits midget and a dwarf. Real. Yeah. Okay, a dwarf was. Um, a normal sized human, so a normal head, normal torso with small with limbs. small limbs. Okay. And a midget was a proportionally That's small sweet. human. So, so I thought it was every, the opposite. Everything was, was, was proportionally correct. That's so bizarre because I watched Lord of the Rings and that dwarf was not did not seem proportionate at all. So for example he seemed like a midget. Um Vern Troyer yes. was a midget. Yeah. Okay. Because he was proportionate he and, had a small head. Um, uh, uh, Dinklage. Would Peter be. Dinklage is a dwarf. So his head and his torso are. So dwarfs do exist. They call it dwarfism. It's dwarfism cool. wait, wait, wait. Is are you sure hobbits never existed? They may have. There's pygmies, but that's basically just small humans. <laughs> <laughs> laughing. I mean, New Duncan Imperials had a song back in the day called Pygmies, and it was just the funniest <laughs> shit. Wow. Oh, we're good. There's another one. I haven't been writing like the twirl anyway. of pins. There you go. So what else you got, man? We're starting to come up on the end of the story. Well, if, if you're not familiar with Robert Ripley, research it. There's museums everywhere. I, I think there's one. There's California, Texas, there, there's, New there's, Orleans. They're all over the place. There's actually a lot of new con a lot of new content daily on their uh, their website, mm -hmm. which I found going into this because I was like, man, it's I haven't looked at a Ripley's book since grade school. What the hell am I going to talk about today? <laughs> Just bullshit. <laughs> nah, nah. Half the stuff I said it was real, um, but I look on their site and they have they have articles related to the to the freaking royal wedding, which I paid no attention to. I mean, either I, who, the, who the fuck got married? I don't give a fuck. I don't They're care. Not, royalty. <laughs> what, what, what would I care? But uh, I guess I don't know. The the cake. There's cake that's preserved. <laughs> Diane's cake. You believe that? You believe that? I believe that. That's a Diana's legit. cake? Yeah, I believe that's legit. That's oh, yeah, legit. That's, that's a traditional thing. They freeze Yeah, they freeze stuff. that stuff all the time. Uh, but uh, there's plenty of stuff on their website where you can believe it or not. And the, the trick is, is is it real? Do you believe it? Well, they present everything as if it's real. And yeah. that's the way we approach stuff is, yeah. you know, in, in a world that's fraught with negativity, we approach things, like, with wonder. We're yeah. like, hey, I would like to believe it's real. Well, we grew up I'm in gonna, a time. I'm gonna listen to the story. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to at least like entertain it. You know, um, my my job is very corporate and very numbers driven. I'm on the freeway all day. I'm looking at sad people in their coffin boxes. I like listening to ghost stories and stories about cryptids and you know monsters and what what if there was like you know what if the giant alligator from the 1981 movie was to pop out of the street and just start wrecking shop on some shit. I, I want to at least think it's plausible. Right? I, don't, I mean, I don't want to get eaten by the alligator, but I always, like, it would make for an interesting day. Well, we, we, we grew up in a time where you didn't automatically try to disprove something. Yeah. You know, and that's what a lot of people well, want now. They just want to disprove things. I will say, whenever you show that book out, like, let's say, school, grade school, there was that one kid, maybe a few kids, be like, no way, is that true? No way. My dad -uh. said. No. -uh. -uh. And, and then you guys would said. talk about it and hash through it and try to make sense of it out of logic, not out of Google. Yeah. You know what? The whole, like, pull your phone out and Google whether or not it's true or not, that, that, that takes the mystery out of it. It takes the it fun does. out of it. And we, we talk about that all the time. Yeah, it's it's, bullshit. It makes it, it makes That's it why these no guys fun. told me to throw my fucking phone away. Yeah. When you learn something, when you used to learn something, you had that moment where you didn't know for a while, and it made it so much more rewarding when you find out. Now you can learn everything instantly. There's no reward. There's no gratification. It's not as wonderful as it used to be. No. Yeah. It, it's that, and it's also, it, it's like the flip side. It's like you've got so much information available to you, but people still walk around in a cloud of ignorance. It's like, like oh this happened, like 
No, it, it, mm. it didn't. It's been disproven by like eight different venues. Google it. And they're like, oh. Like, in, in the age of information, ignorance is a choice. You, know, yeah. you, you, you can walk around and like be informed about things. But, you know, things like Ripley's. It's like I was saying when you came over, like, we only have a couple rules. We don't touch on this, we don't talk about that, and we approach everything as if it's real. Yep. You know? Like, because I don't it's, need it, I don't no need it to be way. proven, I just want to have fun. Yeah. It's no, it's no fun sitting here getting told reasons why Sasquatch doesn't exist. It's more fun getting told reasons why it might. It's like one of my favorite <laughs> memes is the, the little cartoon strip of somebody pinching somebody's lip saying, let people enjoy things. Yep. <laughs> Just let people enjoy things. Well, that's, you know, you say you work with writers. A lot of writers. I, I write as well. I'm in... You I, write horror? I do. You write I, dark fiction? I, I'm, I've got oh, a lot. Okay. And I haven't... I have, I, I've been working with a couple of different groups of folks, you know, I've got some collaborations, I got some anthologies and I got some stuff I'm working on. I usually on. just pay royalties, so just letting you know. Well, no, no, no. I'm just saying like in general, it's a win-win the, situation but, there. But the writing part of it what's great is cuz I've been on some stuff and people will be like, "Well, you know, this is my ghost story." And some people will be like, "Well, this is not plausible." And then the admins come in and they're like, "Plausibility is not You talk about a ghost story. You, you can't you can't you can't you, you can only talk about plausibility if you're giving constructive criticism for a plot hole that you're trying to fix. It's a ghost you, story. You can't, about plausibility. You can't, you can't talk yeah. about, like, well, it doesn't seem like a ghost would hang out in this place because it sucks. They know like, ghosts? Like, well, <laughs> like, they have this a speed story, they for do. ghosts? In this story, they do. So that's what's so great about it is because I try to attach myself to people that are, would rather live in a world of wild wonder and. Ring, ring. It makes so much more fun. I caught up my ghost buddy, and he says ghosts would have hang out over there, and they wouldn't do what they did. <laughs> that would be the equivalent of somebody telling Stephen King in a Creep Show Two with the Hitchhiker episode. He would have been hitchhiking on the off ramp. Yeah, <laughs> you know, the bullshit. You can hitchhike wherever you want. The story's perfect the way it is. Yeah, sorry. Well, that's kind of true. <laughs> dude, the dude got hit by a car. Just let him. Let, yeah. let him haunt in peace. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the ride, lady. Or maybe he's, yeah, he could be. He could be. Well, I think that's going to put a fork in episode 86. Thanks, Mr. Dead Man, Jesse. I got, right. it, Jesse. I got it right this, this is time. Fun. This See, is I'm, fun. I'm always going to remember your name because I've linked it to Jesse Duplantis. I don't know if you remember Jesse Duplantis. He was a televangelist. And uh, he, used to, he used to say great, his name. Great, the opposite he, he of what to, I am. He used to say his name, Jesse. Jesse. <laughs> Jesse. Jesse Duplantis. Nice. <laughs> As always, everybody, thank you so much for listening. Like, share, um, whatever it is that you do on, on, too. on, on Instagram. <laughs> yeah, that kind of stuff. You're like, <laughs> you know, Hopefully close the window the first. Do the ASMR <laughs> stream. We'll we'll see. To, I was about to make, make one of my tasteless jokes just now. But oh, I have no problem with that because I'm at an age right now where I have sex so I can have something to masturbate to later. So, <laughs> masturbate away. <laughs> I'll have a wife, so I'll have a Keep wife. it scary, Scott. Later. Believe it.